Welcome to Operation Fishing Freedom. I'm Ben Olson. Today we're honored to be joined by U.S. Marine Corps veteran and Purple Heart recipient Chad Shevlin. Duty, honor, sacrifice. Every military veteran has a story to tell. Join pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson as they honor the stories of true American heroes on a fishing boat. The mission today is Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. Semper Fidelis. It's the motto of the United States Marine Corps. It's meant to signify a Marine's dedication to each other, to the Corps, and to our country. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm Chad. Morning, Chad. Ben Olson. Nice Good to, to meet see you. you. How's things? Beautiful day. Let's get out there and see if we can get some fish. Absolutely. Purple Heart recipient Chad Shevlin bears the scars of what it means to be a Marine. Well, every day on the water is a beautiful day, but it looks like we have an exceptionally beautiful day today. But as Chad himself would tell you, he chooses to wear his scars of war proudly, like a badge of honor, fighting for the country that he loves. Oh, monstrous one. Little baby. <laughs> We're, we're on the board, though. Yeah. You got to start somewhere, you know. Did you have family in the military? What got you into the military? Uh, my grandfather. He was in World War II. He was in the Navy. I just love hearing his stories. And my uncle was in Vietnam, too. He was in the Navy as well. So a family of Navy men. Why the Marine Corps? I don't know, something about the Marines that I always just wanted to, wanted to go do. You know, you're running, you're getting yelled at, your head's getting shaved, you have to shoot, you have to, you have to perform, you know. And uh, when you graduate Marine Corps boot camp, uh, you do what they call the crucible, which is uh, 36 hours of sleep deprivation, uh, all these obstacles, and you're doing it as a team, and you're learning how to operate, and uh, at the end, you march in, uh, you go on a nice, nice road march, nice hike. It's not nice, it's, it's long and you're tired and you're drawn out. And then you get to the Marine Corps Memorial and your drill instructors give you your Eagle Globe and Acre. And it's a, it's a medal, it's, it's, it's what actually goes on our uniforms. And they hand that to you and you're, you know, the music's playing in the background, you're sobering like a baby because you just endured weeks and weeks of hell. And, uh, and now you've gotten that passing, they're calling you Marine. And they're not drill instructors at that point, they're fellow Marines. And I was 10 feet tall, and I, I'm walking proud, and it was, that was the most, like one of the most prideful things I think I've ever done. You gotta remember, at the time I went in 99, we weren't, we weren't in combat with anybody, so a lot of it was training, you're gonna go to the fleet, uh, being infantry is what I picked to do, so uh, there were the guys that go right in and, and uh, attack, a, attack an objective. Um, I had no idea and everything is still fairly fairly good at that point and 9-11 hit at the end of january first like right in the beginning of february that's when we shipped over to the kuwait uh, at that point i had already brought michelle home to have the baby so what i mean by home is i mean that i brought her back to new hampshire and that's where she ended up having our our kiddo i told myself i said if i get pictures of my daughter i will not have a problem fighting this war i said that to myself and lo and behold, that night on mail call, when we got the mail, I opened up the, the letter my wife sent me and I had pictures of my newborn kid. <laughs> um, so I wrote a letter and I sent it back home and, and I finally turned to when I was gonna get some sleep. Well, within, I would say, not even a, an hour or two of putting my head down on the pillow, Company Gunny comes in, uh, waking us all up, telling us we're going, let's go, get in the vehicle, it's time to go. And this time it was, he's like, it's, it's, we're going. It's, <laughs> it's happening now. And what we, and what we did is we started the air war and the ground war at the same time. We will defend our freedom. We will bring freedom to others. And we will prevail. May God bless our country and all who defend her. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Recon Boats, 
and by Evan Root Outboards. We at Operation Fishing Freedom are able to share and preserve these veteran stories thanks to our great sponsors. They rely on our YouTube subscriptions. That's where you come in. Please go to YouTube, search Operation Fishing Freedom, and click that subscribe button. Operation Fishing Freedom Foundation is also a nonprofit organization. And while we rely heavily on our sponsors, it's the donations from viewers like you that really make a difference. Log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the donate button. Your donations are tax deductible and no donations too small. What's the difference between good and great? Good tries to get it right every time. Great actually does. With Clip Notes, we save your haircut details so you always get exactly the look you want. Great clips, it's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good is when your haircut costs less. Great is when it still meets high standards. At Great Clips, you'll always get the haircut you want for less. And with our easy online check-in app, you'll save time too. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. Recon, Mother Nature's Fury is no match for the new Recon 2185. Setting a new standard for deep V big water fishing, the 2185 features a heavy duty transom specifically designed to accommodate today's high powered outboards with ample room for a kicker on either side. The 2185 boasts a superior interior with an incredible cargo capacity and the industry's best rod storage, having the capability of holding up to 21 rods over 10 feet long. The new Recon 2185, built by craftsmen, built for fishermen. To demonstrate the uncompromising performance of Evan Rood, we took to the water. Here's what real boaters had to say. At Twin 300, it was just incredible. The acceleration, the torque, it was just effortless to drive. It was smooth, it was powerful, it turned so responsibly. The eye dock was really cool to try. I was really impressed with how easy you were able to come into the dock. Doing the head-to-head -head fuel consumption, oil consumption, hands down, the heat tech had it. Operation Fishing Freedom Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to documenting the lives of our military veterans. And your donations allow us to provide education and treatment to our veterans. Log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the donate button. This is a real one. Oh, look at that thing. Being stationed in Kuwait when Operation Iraqi Freedom was announced. Nice fish, too. Chad and his combat team were among the first. That's a beautiful fish. To get the call. That's a man, they're so pretty here, too. The water's clear, so you get that nice color. Gun in hand, combat team at his side, and pictures of his newborn daughter in his armor. Chad was ready as they began their assault on Baghdad. When did you say you got injured? Uh, I got injured on April 10th, the last day of the war officially ended. <laughs> we, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we worked our way all the way up through the, you know, the, the southern part of Iraq to, towards Baghdad. We took hip pocket fire here and there. Um, we were on the highway cruising up in what they call a, an AAV, which is a troop carrier for the Marines. It's amphibious. It's like a tank. The hatch would drop. We'd come barreling out and we would take the objective and they'd help lay down cover fire for us. Our objective was to go take Baghdad and that took that took a long time to get up there. It took from uh, March 21st to April 10th when we actually got that first week in April when we got up there. We actually got hit in the sandstorms that were out there that it was so bad in the sandstorm you could put your hand in front of your face like this and you wouldn't even see it. 
and, and there were a lot of guerrilla units that they had that were attacking us in those sandstorms, taking out our uh, retrans sites, which are like our repeaters for our radios. Um, you know, they would they would fight they would fight dirty. <laughs> uh, the Saddam Canal. Um, they, he tried blowing up the bridges on us, which this is kind of cool. But he tried blowing up the bridges on the bridges on us, and um, little did he know that our military is awesome and we can build bridges very fast. And our vehicles, we just dump. I remember dumping into the Tigris River and floating across, and then coming out the other side. So you can't, you can't stop it, you know. I remember our platoon commander stopping us the night of April 9th early that morning and telling us that, you know, we have had a Saddam sighting within a couple minutes of the area uh, that we think of, intel states that he was in the area, and fighting was minimal. There shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a lot of resistance there. That wasn't the case, because then at that point, we, we drove in and it was like kicking over a hornet's nest. At this point, we were fighting Egyptians, Fedidine, all these different cells that were out there. They were snipers, were taking pot shots at us, all, all, in, the, all in the mix of this fight. Um, and we were taking heavy RPG fire. That is when my life changed. It turned into the most chaotic firefight I had been in the entire time. Uh, so I remember at one point dropping down in the vehicle and we were engaging enemy and I had to reload. And then when I went to come back, but right before I came back up out of the air watch panel on the side, um, an RPG came at it and stuck in a piece of metal and the tail just burnt out. It just sat there and fizzed out. That was, that was like really when I knew that like this is not really not good. One came out of, an, uh, out of an alleyway at me, very skinny alleyway, and it came straight at me, and I saw it coming. And it went just below the air watch panel, and then it detonated in my face. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips. Yance Valor Foundation, and by St. Croix Rods. If you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage and bonus content, follow us on social media and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. What's the difference between good and great? Good treats you like a customer. Great treats you like a friend. From saving your haircut details and clip notes to saving you time with online check-in, Great Clips makes your life easier, just like a great friend should. Great Clips. It's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good tries to get it right every time. Great actually does. With Clip Notes, we save your haircut details so you always get exactly the look you want. Great Clips. It's gonna be great. Nobody wants to run out of power when they're on the water. There is a better way. Introducing the Charge Marine Power Management Station from PowerPole that does the work of three devices, a traditional battery charger, a charge on the run, and an emergency start system. PowerPole Charge. Recon. Mother Nature's Fury is no match for the new Recon 2185. Setting a new standard for deep V big water fishing, the 2185 features a heavy duty transom specifically designed to accommodate today's high powered outboards with ample room for a kicker on either side. The 2185 boasts a superior interior with an incredible cargo capacity and the industry's best rod storage, having the capability of holding up to 21 rods over 10 feet long. The new Recon 2185, built by craftsmen, built for fishermen. To demonstrate the uncompromising performance of Evan Rood, we took to the water. Here's what real boaters had to say. At Twin 300, it was just incredible. The acceleration, the torque, it was just effortless to drive. It was smooth, it was powerful, it turned so responsively. The iDock was really cool to try. I was really impressed with how easy you were able to come into the dock. 
Doing the head-to-head -head fuel consumption, oil consumption, hands down, the E-Tech had it. Our military has sacrificed for our freedom. It's up to us to enjoy it. So get out there and enjoy the open water, the freedom of nature, the freedom to fish, and of course, the freedom to celebrate. We at TH Marine want to say thank you. As a family-owned business, we take pride in serving our veterans from transom to trolling motor since 1975. If you're a U.S. military veteran living in Illinois, Wisconsin, or Minnesota, log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. Produced in association with the Yance Valor Foundation. United States Marine Chad Shevlin was severely wounded on the last day of fighting during Operation Iraqi Freedom when a rocket-propelled grenade hit Chad's amphibious assault vehicle. The RPG detonated just below Chad's face. It came underneath that, and there's a gap probably about this big wide, and the explosion came up right here. Uh, it disintegrated my jaw immediately, took it from here to here. Um, I had a neck protector up here on the side of my neck, so that's why I think a lot of my arteries were saved here. Um, they said there were big pieces of shrapnel like that stuck in it. Um, I took shrapnel all in my Kevlar, um, knocked out half my teeth, and ultimately I took a piece of shrapnel in my right eye and I detached my retina. I went back, I came forward, like, what was that? I came back up, I sighted, I shot in that direction, uh, I hit the enemy, and then I put my hand up here and I could feel the blood going on my hand and I could feel like I had no, no jaw on the side of my face. And uh, I sat down in my vehicle at that point and my guy started yelling, I'm dead. And I grabbed one of them and I gave him a thumbs up and it's, you know, like, I'm not out yet, you know. They started bandaging me up and handling business and they just, you know what they did? They did, they continued to roll like they should roll. Like, even though I was out of the fight, they handled what they needed to handle. And to, to this day, I'm truly amazed by that. A couple thoughts that ran through my mind is I'm not dying here. Um, you know, I got a newborn baby girl I haven't even met. Um, and I promised my wife I'd come back. I said I didn't say how I'd come back, but I said I'd come back. So then there was that part, you know, when anybody that can marry can appreciate this, but when you hurt yourself, you go, oh crap, my wife's gonna kill me, you know. She was worried that if I didn't make it back, and I promised her I'd make it back. I didn't tell her how, but I said, I said I'll come back in, in some form. <laughs> We had a forward observer that had gotten hit as well in this firefight and still managed to call these helicopters in. Uh, those two pilots did something phenomenal and came into that, that hot, hot zone to get us out of there. I remember the crew chief running by because there's lots of people coming on this helicopter and I grabbed him by his, by his shirt as he went by and I'm like, I signal give something to write with and he hands me his notepad and pen, and I write, choking on my blood, let me up. And uh, he grabbed me, pulled me out of the stretcher, and put me like in a jump seat on the side. Um, so I was at least able to breathe. At that point when I woke up, I was in like this uh, tent kind of hospital. My jaw was wired closed, and I had a tracheotomy put in, so this was in here. Uh, I had a patch over my eye, because they later learned that my retina got detached in that blast. Um, they said my carotid artery was literally just missed by a hair from a piece of shrapnel, like, just missed. One of the corpsmen uh, that's there comes up and asks me, has anybody talked to your wife to tell you how you're doing today? And I'm like, no. I'm like, no, they haven't. So he makes the phone call. Uh, this is probably about, I'd say, two days, three days after I actually was injured. My wife still did not uh, did not know know at this point, so she gives he, he gives the uh, the phone to me and I can't talk to her, and my wife's crying and I'm pretty upset at this point and uh, all I could do is tap on the phone, so she's like all I want to hear is a beep that you're okay and I and I just I just tapped on the phone that's all I could do, and uh, it. That was that was hard. That was hard because you know you're stuck there at that point. You know, um, 
and you can't talk, you can't tell her it's gonna be okay, you couldn't tell her, I'm fine, you know, you just had to give a tap. <laughs> so when they got into the ICU, uh, she was already there. Um, I woke up and she's like, do you wanna meet your daughter? So that's how I got to meet my daughter, Michaela, for the first time. And Michelle put Michaela on my chest as I sat there and it was the most uh, comforting Thing that you could deal with. Um, it, it, uh, she was so quiet, such a quiet, quiet baby. Like she, like you, the connection, you know, meeting for the first time at this point. I mean, she's already almost three months old, you know. <laughs> I laid there, I held her, I, uh, I, I remember holding my wife's hand, and inside I felt, but I couldn't really, I couldn't really show much, you know. Yeah, no, it's. It's amazing what a family, a, a strong family can do for somebody too, and strong support. And uh, there, I owe a lot to them for where I'm at even today. The Semper Fi Fund is dedicated to providing immediate financial assistance and lifetime support to combat wounded, critically ill, and injured members of the U.S. Armed Forces and their families. What's the difference between good and great? Good is when your haircut costs less. Great is when it still meets high standards. At Great Clips, you'll always get the haircut you want for less. And with our easy online check-in app, you'll save time too. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. What's the difference between good and great? Good treats you like a customer. Great treats you like a friend. From saving your haircut details and clip notes to saving you time with online check-in, Great Clips makes your life easier, just like a great friend should. Great Clips, it's gonna be great. If you're a U.S. military veteran looking for the fishing experience of a lifetime, nice fish. join me, Jay Garstecki, and the Operation Fishing Freedom team as we travel to Temple Bay Lodge on beautiful Eagle Lake in Ontario, Canada. Oh, monstrous one. Oh, <laughs> the dates are September 5th through the 12th, 2020. If you'd like more information, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com, and click on the Take Me to Canada button. J-Dog Junk Removal and Hauling. It's a national junk removal company that franchises exclusively to vets. The Jeep turned into a Hummer, the Hummer turned into a Raptor, the Raptor turned into a dog. Before you know it, I'm going to the VA hospital and I'm, I'm hiring veterans. And I'm like, man, this feels really good. It's respect, integrity, and trust. And when you have a veteran that you know their work ethic, you know what they've been trained to do, you put them in our system, it's, it's a perfect match. So the goal for us is get the unemployment rate under 1% for veterans. We're on our way. Our military has sacrificed for our freedom. It's up to us to enjoy it. So get out there and enjoy the open water, the freedom of nature, the freedom to fish, and of course, the freedom to celebrate. We at TH Marine want to say thank you. As a family-owned business, we take pride in serving our veterans from transom to trolling motor since 1975. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you saw in one of our episodes, or nominate a veteran to be featured on a future episode, log on to our website, operationfishingfreedom.com. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by ARE Accessories, Optima Batteries, and by TH Marine. It's the incomparable fighting spirit found inside Marines that drives them to nothing less than victory in all situations. Chad now has a new battle. His objective, recovery. So, you know, I wasn't going to take that stuff lying down. Um, I needed to get back up and get back out running again and push forward and take this bump in the road and put it behind me, right? Worrying about what I look like was never a worry. Um, 
I don't know why it doesn't bother it doesn't bother me today you know what I mean I kind of like people get tattoos right I you know this is this is something I got to do fighting for my country um, I take pride in it um, it wasn't it wasn't easy to get used to things again I'll tell you that like talking was it was difficult at first scars do not they're not very forgiving um, really aside from the major nerve damage it's really no different than I was um, you know because I can't feel anything on the side of my face major nerve damage aside oh, yeah. Chad's heart to serve and protect That's a better one. continues to beat strong okay, just keep down the water keep down the water let them fight yeah, now working fight. in law enforcement that's a nice fish <laughs> chad recently completed his that's very awesome. first Beautiful. marine corps <laughs> marathon you don't hit the ground running that's for sure i mean you have to you have to re refactor in a society think of it like training for a marathon right when you train for a marathon you don't go out and run 26 miles you go out and run a couple miles and then after the pain stops hurting for that and then you run a couple more miles and then you continue to push yourself a mile at a time right you take it a mile at a time you have to and you have to do that even with getting out of uh, out of the service or if you had something happen to you you have to take it a mile at a time it's not going to change overnight you're going to be in pain you're going to deal with that your body aching all the way up and you want to give up and why am I doing this? But you can't, because there will be a reward at the end, right? It's when you get like in the marathon, I can't wait to cross the finish line. You know, I, it's gonna be kind of humbling to be able to run by uh, Arlington, stuff like that, you know? Well, Chad, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you coming out and sharing your story. And when I think about what it says on the door of the police car to protect and serve, it seems to me like that defines Chad. So. It's really been our honor, and we just have a little something we'd like to give you just to commemorate our time out here and welcome you to our team and say thank you for your service and your sacrifice. And we want to make sure we really include your family in that. We really appreciate their service and sacrifice. We have your very own handcrafted for Chad. In appreciation of your service and sacrifice, it has our logo on there, all the branches of the service. That's a St. Croix rod from Angry Bear Customs. And then we have your very own to welcome you to our team and just again say thank you for everything you've done to serve and protect us both in law enforcement and in your time in the service. We have your very own Chad Shevlin Operation Fishing Freedom Jersey. Now you'll look real professional when you get out there on the water. Wow, thank you so much. So awesome. Thank you very Thank much you so for much. coming out and sharing your story and for everything you've done for our country and for your town and for Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you for everything you guys are doing. If you'd like to personally thank a veteran that you saw in one of our episodes, or nominate a veteran to be featured on a future episode, log on to our website, OperationFishingFreedom.com.